First of all, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button so you get notified every time I post a new video. And if you want to increase the speed of my lectures, go in the settings above, tap on the playback speed button and increase the speed or decrease the speed as per your need. Okay, so let us start with the lecture now. Before going to straight towards the management of open fracture, you guys need to know two things. The first one is what are the types of open fracture and what are the types of wound closure. So first of all, let us see the types of open fracture. You are going to differentiate the open fracture into type 1, type 2, type 3 and further ABC on the basis of its wound size the level of contamination, the injury to the soft tissue and the bone and its line of management. So let us first start with the type 1 of open fracture. In type 1, the wound size is less than or 1 cm. The wound is clean, there is very less contamination and the soft tissue injury is very much minimal that it can be treated with simple stitches. And the injury to the bone is also very much minimal. It can be a hair crack, hairline fracture or very minor fracture and it can be treated with simple reduction. So how are you going to treat the type 1 fracture? You are going to clean the wound, you are going to close the wound and you are going to treat it as a closed fracture. That is the type 2 of the open fracture. Type 2 of the open fracture. Here the wound size is more than 1 cm and less than 10 cm. The contamination, we are going to see it in the management further. The tissue damage, soft tissue damage is moderate. It can be a simple muscle damage. But here there is no loss of any chunk of muscle skin or any soft tissue. There is no flap formation so that it, there can be, it can be, it can act as a site of infection. And the fracture is simple with very moderate reduction. So how you are... In management, it is written as per the case, treatment is like open fracture. See, the level of contamination is, it can be, there is no contamination or there can be minimal cont contamination or there can be moderate and severe contamination. See, in case of this type 2 open fracture, if there is very less contamination or no contamination, you are going to close the, clean the wound, close the wound and treat it as a closed fracture. But if the tissue contamination is moderate or severe, you are going to keep it open, you are going to take care of the wound and close it later on and treat it as a open fracture. Now let us move towards the type 3 of the open fracture. Here the wound size is usually greater than 10 cm and the contamination is really very high. You can see the foreign bodies, mud and the foreign and the uh, infectious agent in that. It can be a farmyard injury, most commonly it is a farmyard injury, a gunshot injury or the working environment is really dirty. So as soon as you get a wound, you come in contact with that dirty environment and there is contamination of wood. What happens here, there is severe injury. The injury is severe and high energy in injury. It, it is a crushing injury. See, if, uh, in the harvester, in the, uh, in the farmyard injury, the most common injuries are because of the harvesters. The, patient, the patient's arm or any limb comes in uh, the harvester and there is severe crushing of this injury. Then there is vascular injury and it needs repairing. And because of this severe high velocity crushing injuries, there are many fractures, fragments of bone and even that one fragment can be missing. So this is how you get the type 3 of the open fracture. Now on the basis of the soft tissue level and the periosteum, you are going to differentiate further into 3A, 3B and 3C. So in 3A, the soft tissue coverage is adequate and the periosteum is intact. There is no loss or stripping of periosteum. But what happens in 3B, there is extensive tissue injuries, vascular injuries, blood loss, vascular injuries, soft tissue loss, even the bone loss and the periosteum is stripped. And then is 3C. Here you have the loss of periosteum, tremendous loss of stock tissue. There is uh, ischemia, vascular injuries. So that goes into type 3C. Now before starting with the proper management, let us see what do you mean by primary wound closure, secondary wound closure and delayed primary wound closure. Because this is going to help you in management of open fracture. 
and understand better. The first one is primary wound closure. What happens in primary wound closure? This type of wound is very simple. It can be a simple cut or clean cut lacerated wound. Here the approximation of two cut ends are possible and it the chance of infection is very less the there is minimum infection and new vascularization and the keratocytes uh, which should keratinocytes which should take uh, which should migrate to the affected part there is there is requirement of very less migration because the wound is really clean and small so what you are going to do, you are just going to simply stitch the wound or you in market you get that uh, sticky stitches. You can put that and um, tighten it up and you get the closure of the wound. There is very less form, uh, formation of scar and this primary wound closes with primary intention. So what do you mean by primary intention? The primary intention consi consists of simple cleaning of wound and stitching the wound. That's it. This is the primary intention intention of wound healing then let us move towards the secondary wound closure and what do you mean by secondary intention what happens in secondary wound closure there is loss of soft tissue there is loss of skin or a chunk of skin so the approximation of two cut ends or the affected ends are not possible here the tissue grows by the requires granulation tissue matrix for the secondary wound closure and Hence, there is higher chance of infection. This secondary wound heals by the secondary intention. So, what do you mean by secondary intention? In the secondary intention, there is extensive loss and considerable loss of tissue, and it heals with the granulation tissue matrix. So, how does the secondary intention and the primary intention differ from each other? Since you are not going to close the wound, the wound is going to heal on itself there is increased time duration for healing since there is increased time duration the injury is going to be open for longer period of time the, there is more chance of infection and since the wound is large there can there is more very much scarring as compared to primary um, intention in primary wound closure there can be no or minimal scarring but here in secondary intention there is scar scarring greater than primary intention then let us see the delayed primary wound closure. What happens? You are doubtful about whether the wound is clean or not. You want to keep it open for draining of the cavities or there can be a vascular ischemia. For all these region, reasons, the wound care specialist plans it to keep the wound open. He or she decides that you need to keep the wound open for 2-3 to three days, observe it and then you are going to close the wound. So you are going to keep the wound open and then going to close. So you are doing the primary closure but you are delaying it. Hence you call, it is called as delayed primary closure. And this delayed primary closure helps with the tertiary intention. What is tertiary intention actually? Tertiary, tertiary intention is the mixture of primary and the secondary intention. You are going to close the wound. It is going to heal by secondary intention. But you are going to keep the wound open for 2-3 to three days. It is going to heal by the secondary intention. And what happens in tertiary intention? The scarring is even more than the secondary intention of wound healing. So these are the different types of intentions of wound healing, wound healing and wound closure. Now let us move towards the open fracture. So next video will be on the open fracture of the... Um,